Yo and hello everybody, Mike here, Baseball Collector. It's Monday night and lots of fun stuff today. Uh, we had two new Hall of Famers that were elected into the Hall of Fame by the Veterans Committee yesterday. But I had a couple things to show. I got a little bit of mail, just all kinds of stuff. And I've been thinking about today how to do this video and, you know, I'm kind of torn on some things. So bear with me. There are different people with different styles, certainly on YouTube and different ways of doing things. And sometimes, you know, people, I'm, I shouldn't say sometimes, there are viewers out there, I'm sure, that say, man, just get me straight to the cards. I just want to see the cards. All the talking and all that. I'm not into that. I don't care about that. I just want to see the cards. And that's fine. You can be that way. But I've been thinking, you know, I'm really more of a Eric Those Back Pages kind of guy where it's just a lot of talking. And it's like you're hanging out with your friend and getting to hang out with them and watch them talk about cards and whatever else is on their mind. And, you know, as much as I just want to kind of rush right into the cards, I, you know, it's not nearly as much fun as just sitting here and talking to y'all and going over stuff and what I'm thinking about kind of telling different stories and things. So that's what we're going to do. Just kind of relax a little bit, chill out. I don't want to drone on and on and just say things just to say things, but I don't want to feel rushed. So I'm just going to take my time. So there was a guy that I met oh several weeks ago before that big collection that I went and looked at or around that same time, I should say. And he, um, I went and saw him today again because he had a gift for me and it's this right here. Strength down the middle. And his name is Larry Callis and he actually works in my building and he wrote this book. I don't know when, let me see when he wrote it. I can't remember when he wrote it. It's not a new book for sure. 1999. So he wrote it 20 years ago. And it's a story about the 1959 White Sox. And he grew up in Chicago and big fan of the White Sox. And great team, 59 White Sox. You had Louis Aparicio and Nellie Fox up the middle. Uh, they were really a great team. And so he loved them and wrote a book about them. And he gave me a copy of the book today. And it's signed and it says... To Mike, a kindred spirit when it comes to the game we love... I know you appreciate the history of the game, which I do. Trust you'll enjoy this read. Best regards, Larry Callis. And so I just thought that was really cool. He called me and wanted me to come up to his office and grab it, so I did. And then he also, I got three more copies of the book. And so what I thought I'd do is I would give them away, because uh, I don't need four copies of the book. I have one copy. One of them, for sure, is going to Wayne. And Wayne knows who he is. He's a frequent commenter on my channel, big White Sox guy. And so I thought I would give him one of the books and then, you know, maybe leave a comment as to if you'd like one of the books and why you'd like it. And I'll just kind of pick two guys to send the book to. Uh, I'm excited about reading it, mainly because I've met the author and I just love, again, anything about the history of the game, I just enjoy and really love. So that was kind of neat. Something happened today. Uh, Wanna bunch of stuff in the REA auction last night. Oh my gosh, there was so much stuff. Uh, yeah, got some pretty epic stuff. Some nice upgrades. Uh, one, maybe two new Hall of Famers. I can't remember off the top of my head. So that'll be fun. That'll be several weeks. Probably I'll be lucky to get that stuff before Christmas. I still have to mail off my payment and get them back and all that. That may take a little while, but I did get some auction stuff back today from, uh, let's see, who is this? Love of the Game that I got back today, some stuff. But let's talk about the Hall of Fame real quick. Because last night, two new guys got in via the vet Veterans Committee. And if you're not familiar, the Veterans Committee is 16 members, uh, six former players, which was on this year's committee was George Brett, Robin Yount, Eddie Murray, Rod Carew. I um, can't remember the other ones off the top of my head, but Ozzie Smith, maybe. 
just some great guys. And then there's a group of six executives in the game or former executives. Dave Dombrowski was one of them. Um, oh gosh, Doug Melvin was another one, several others. And then there's like four sports writers, 16 total. You gotta get 12 votes to get in. And two guys did, uh, but there was guys like Steve Garvey, Dale Murphy, Dave Parker, Dwight Evans, uh, Don Mattingly, you know, nice, a great ballot, really. Thurman Munson was on the ballot. And two guys that got in were the two guys that I thought if there were only going to be two guys that got in, this was who I thought was going to get in. I only have literally one card of the one, one of the guys. And I bought it recently because I really thought he was going to get in. And that's uh, Ted Simmons. Actually, I'll show these when we turn it around. But Ted Simmons. Great catcher for the Cardinals, the Brewers, um, the Braves, I think, his last couple of years that he played for. Absolutely deserved to get in. When he retired, he was number one in hits and RBIs uh, for catchers all time. He's still currently number two behind Yvonne Rodriguez for those categories. So amazing career, 17-year career, eight-time All-Star, something like that. Really, really great career. And uh, catcher's a tough position. was a tough position back then because it was the 70. He started in 71 as his rookie card, by the way, which I bought one of those. Sunday night before the announcement, maybe Saturday night, actually, now that I think about it. And I got a PSA 7, and you guys know how tough 71 is. I think I paid $140 for, for 145 actually, is what it was after everything, shipping and everything, for a PSA 7. PSA 8s are like four or $500 now. It's crazy. Um, kind of the Harold Baines effect, Lee Smith effect of last year, when those guys got in unexpectedly in their but his card's always been, like, it's been pretty pricey the whole time. Uh, so I got one of those. That'll be coming in the mail probably next week. But I, that, I didn't have any cards of his. Like, I have no slabs. But what's fun is when guys get in the Hall of Fame is then I can take, like, last night I was, like, a kid in a candy store. I took all, you know, on my three and four decades set. I was able to put in all the Ted Simmons cards of where he is in that, you know, Hall of Fame rookie set. Um, Hall of Fame last card set, which is 1988, by the way. So all these new cards I get to go get of Ted Simmons, that's the only autograph I have of him, the one I just showed. And so I need to get some more autographs of him. And he doesn't have that much stuff. He has like one relic card or something. But the other guy that got in was a pioneer in the sport, and it was Marvin Miller. You don't want me to show everything this way tonight. Just do it this way. Who cares? Uh, Marvin Miller, MLBPA executive director for from 60 to, God, does it even say? Oh, yeah, it does. Hold on. It does say on here. 1966 to 1983. And Marvin Miller was an absolute game changer in baseball, essentially taking free agency to a whole new level for the players, amazing increase in player salaries over his time, pension benefits, all sorts of stuff that happened at his direction of the MLBPA. He was an incredible ambassador for the players and huge contributor to the game and where it is today. And some people think that's bad. Like, I wish baseball didn't have what it had. wasn't so greedy in business and all this. Look, it was like that before. It was just all going to the owners. So it's not like it wasn't all business. And I mean, if you read stories about the old commissioners and presidents of the league and the owners, they were ruthless sons of bitches. And they didn't give two shakes about their players and would trade them and cast them off at a moment's notice and pay them pennies. And I mean, let's not kid ourselves. And so now or what Marvin Miller was able to do was some of that tremendous slice of the pie was starting to be able to be, you know, redirected towards the players, the ones actually generating the entertainment for, for the people that were paying to be there and buying the memorabilia and the Trotsky's and all that kind of stuff. So Marvin Miller, big guy, huge guy in the, in the baseball world and absolutely deserves to be in the hall of fame. That's my only autograph of him, but it is a nine. So that's awesome. And, I also got this 
oh, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago from Bill, the Hall of Fame collector. He sent me this 2010 Allen and Ginter shirt card. It's a shirt, not a patch. It's not a patch. It's a shirt that Marvin Miller wore. And he's got those in the 2010 uh, Allen and Ginter set. He also has certified autographs in that set as well in 2010 Allen and Ginter. I don't have one of those. Those were crazy expensive. It's funny how you go look on eBay after these guys get elected and the prices just have gone bananas. And rightfully so, I guess, at least, you know, this first, uh, you know, few weeks or whatever after they get elected. So Marvin Miller, Ted Simmons, congratulations. Marvin Miller's passed away. So congratulations. And uh, Ted Simmons hopefully will start signing more stuff and having more stuff and products for him because it's it's pretty scarce, actually. And I'm looking forward to hunting down all of his regular tops cards. That'll be fun. So I did get, here's some auction wins I got from uh, Love of the Game, actually. Now, I do remember that it was Love of the Game. They had a big auction a couple weeks ago. And then I got two Player Era cards and Player Era Hall of Fame autographs. Those are, I love getting tops cards signed. But it's funny, these, I got a 59 tops and a 62 tops. Back then, like back in the 80s and stuff, it was almost blasphemous to get a vintage card autographed. I mean, you were talking about um, essentially de de destroying the card. And uh, like, why would you do that? You're ruining the card. And it wasn't a big deal. So it's really hard. It's today, modern now, that's very normal uh, to do that. But back then, back in the 80s and, and not early 90s, when I first started collecting, it was not okay to do that or at least frowned upon to do that I should say it wasn't that it didn't get done or else these cards wouldn't exist they do but uh, so what I have here is a 1962 tops Bill Mazeroski autograph it's got a JSA sticker on the back I want to say I paid like 80 bucks for the pair of these so like that includes shipping and insurance and Buyer's premium and all that fun stuff. So there's a Bill Mazeroski, 62 tops. And the other one I got is Mr. Larry Doby on the Detroit Tigers, no less. And you'll notice this a lot, too. When these cards were signed back in the 80s, ballpoint pen was the predominant writing utensil used by these guys. So you'll see a lot of these old cards signed in ballpoint pen. I mean, there weren't sharpies and stuff like that back then certainly not stadlers and all the pins that they have now so but this is larry doby's last card which is awesome larry doby first african-american to play in the american league for the cleveland indians ironically doesn't get nearly enough credit because he started just a few months after jackie came in and larry doby doesn't get nearly enough credit for what he went through with the indians it's all about jackie well, doby was literally three or four months behind and incredibly overlooked accomplishment that he did and over or underrated for a play, the player that he was. So love having that. That's my first on-card Larry Doby player era. And same for Mazeroski. It's my first one. They're both JSA. So there's that. Last thing I got in the mail today was just a slab for my three-decade set, four-decade set, whatever it is. Here's a 61 Tops. Bob Gibson in a five. This is a surprisingly expensive card in higher grade, so I'd love to have it in a six, but I mean, it's off center, but that's a really nice five. So buy the card, not the grade. I don't know if you ever heard that before. Just kidding. We all say it because it's true. Buy the card, not the grade. So there you go, guys. Kind of a little rambling slash sharing video, uh, sharing knowledge, just talking like you'd be talking to a friend. I guess that's how I think about videos and just wanting to sit down, have a little fireside chat with you about what's going on. So seems like it's more fun than just rushing. Here's what I got. Check it out. So thanks everybody for watching. As always, I hope you have a great night, a great week. We'll talk to you soon. Keep collecting.